Please subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, IG, or YouTube. You can also listen to our podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, www.theempireradio.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. So we won two national championships. Mm-hmm. So my question to you is in the development category, is it always been the case or it's been there at times like when we won the national championships in decline? It, has it never been there since he's been there? You've seen decline in all these places or is it does it come and go? No, I, I think what happened is and, and uh, what's been exposed this year is we just out-athleted everybody before. Okay, mm-hmm. We had some great, great athletes. And uh, those great athletes uh, shine, uh, D- Deshaun. Yeah. I mean, Deshaun Watson, in-, in essence, won most of those games that year just on straight out, just play. I'm, Not, better. I'm better than them. I'm better than them. And also, yeah. you know, getting outside of uh, whatever the play was. Um, so, again, um, one other critical. So, the development part, if you're a great athlete mm-hmm. and you're playing in the ACC, mm-hmm. okay, um, and, and the ACC, you know, let's be let's be honest, has been weak. Yeah. Okay. The the last what five to seven years, uh, you know. So again, we cakewalk through the ACC, um, and then we play um, in the first round. Um, I get, well now since we have a, a playoff system, but before it wasn't a playoff system. So you know, um, we play in the first round, win that game, and then hopefully get in and, and win after that. Um, another critical part of, of coaching is uh, making adjustments. Okay, during the game, if you think back on that, uh, the, the the time we lo- the game we lost, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, we, we we got saving in the kickoff. You know, we talked yeah. about that before mm-hmm. on that. So um, what I've noticed several times is when we we get into a football game and halftime. So being a coach, mm-hmm. you know, I've been on both sides of it. So mm-hmm. what we do in the uh, at halftime, is you go in and the first thing you talk about is what do we need to change, okay? okay. We have a game plan that we went through all week. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to do this against that. We're going to do this against that. Mm-hmm. We're going to do this against that. What you have to do as a coach, you have to game plan if they defense your stuff, okay? Mm-hmm. You also have to be a great, um, a great student of the game on offense to say what the defense might do to defense that and make, vice versa. What they may change. What they may change. Gotcha. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we go out there and we say, damn it, we got a game plan. Yeah. I don't give a damn if it's working or we're not. We're going to ride it. We're going to ride it. Yeah. Okay. And before, we had Deshaun and we had um, um, Trevor Lawrence and Etienne yeah. and all yeah. those receivers. Yeah. We had great defend, a, a great defensive yeah. line. Okay, first off, everything starts from the line. You can talk about the quarterback, the defensive backs, everything starts with the line. So, again, that defensive line that we had that came back after we lost that year, mm-hmm. huge in yes. everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, controls the football game. Okay. And we had a true freshman quarterback. And we had and a true we freshman. Win. Yeah, and we could win. Mm-hmm. But, again, Trevor Lawrence was truth. Okay. All right. We had this conversation about KB and everything. Yeah, right. Again, um, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna play this RPO stuff, you gotta have a R and a P. Okay, <laughs> yeah. you gotta have a run and a pass. Okay, right. if you don't, if you have just a run, mm-hmm. then you just bring a linebacker in and you protect the the, the run. And uh, I'm sorry, another yeah. lineman, and you protect the run and make them beat you with the pass. Gotcha. Same thing, the opposite way. If you if you don't have the R, then you just bring a linebacker in and you just move him around and, um, and and stop, you know, the pass. So, again, that's the greatest thing about Deshaun and um, Trevor Lawrence. Those guys could do both of them. Get run. Yeah, run and pass, okay? Um, so, again, what we do as a team is we just go out there and say, we just going to beat y'all with whatever we got. What we had before was we had exceptional athletes mm-hmm. that could play above that, mm-hmm. you know, um, I had this coach one time say, "Hey, sometimes you need to, sometimes you need to be above coaching, you know." Mm-hmm. And and athletes can do that. 
We didn't have the athletes last year. I don't know where they were because the last five years, we're supposed to be the top ten in recruiting. in recruiting. Okay, but we got two six-year guys playing on defense that were just slow as Christmas. I mean, you know, Skowski, good, you know, good. Hard nose. Hard nose. But again, between us, Skowski um, wouldn't have played, would, would have probably been a special teams player back when we played, or really on any other team besides the one that he was on this year. Okay? Um, if we remember the pit game, there were two critical plays where he got ran, outran by, a, a, I think, about a 6'5 six, a six, quarterback that outran him and, and, and got two first downs to, yeah. to win the game. Of course, you know, there's no plays that uh, win or lose a game, but there are plays that impact the game. Yes, sir. Those two first downs won the game. Mm -hmm. We had somebody that could get to the quarterback um, and, and make a stop right there, change the whole complexion of the game. Okay. Uh, Skowski, again, I think he was all ACC, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, very, I mean, played good. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. a good player. Right. He's okay. A, and he's a grown man because he's been there six years. He's so been he, there six years. Again. <laughs> so my whole thing about that is why do we have him and, and, and Turner? Okay. I Okay. As a defensive back, you know, you play three staple coverages. You play a cover one, which is a man to man. Cover two, you got two safeties over the top. You got either a hard corner or, or something like that. And then you got cover three, which you got. A middle third, you know, people playing thirds. Okay, mm -hmm. a cover three. The worst thing you can do is get beat in a cover three. You got nothing up here, everything behind you. Okay. We have gotten beat in cover three more than anybody I've ever seen as a free safety. Never seen it happen before. It, it's just that doesn't happen, and it's it's just speed. And it's speed. Athleticism. To play. Athleticism. Play and speed. Yeah, Turner. You know, it, several different places. You know, did good things. He yeah. made that interception against. And, and you, as you about to say, that's what I was just thinking about that game against um, Justin, um, Justin Fields, Ohio State game. Yeah, really, he's playing Justin Fields' face. He's not. He's not playing the, the wide receiver. So that's the reason he got the interception because he's playing Justin Fields. But if, if Justin Fields and the in the wide receiver are just on the same on page, the same page, it's it's wide open touchdown. We done. Yeah. It'll yeah. Be but again, you know, we can speculate on a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. But I know football and I know technique. And again, if we had all these athletes that we're talking about, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. we wouldn't need two six year people playing football uh, in critical places like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, my question is, is where are the athletes at right yeah. now? Okay. Yeah. We, um, we still, we had those two guys in, we had a lot of people hurt that that was our excuse this year. Everybody's talking about a rebuilding year. This is not a rebuilding year. We were number two in the nation started out the season. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not a rebuilding year. Okay. What happened in my opinion uh -huh. is we finally got to a point where we had to coach. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have to coach and develop people. Mm -hmm. Also, part of coaching and development is personnel. <clears throat> okay, personnel. Mm -hmm. You got to put the right. You got to put the best man on the field. Mm -hmm. I don't think we had the best man on the field in in mm -hmm. in, in different cases. I mean, hey, yeah. leave it to me. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll I'll the elephant in the room. We got people with the same last names as the coaches out on the field playing way more minutes than they may should have. Okay. We had Dabo's son going in as receivers in critical times. We got we got five star guys on the bench over there that can't get in the game. I don't know what caused them not to be able to get in the game, but you know we got him. We got um, um son, Venables. Venables' sons, both two of them out there. You know, playing in critical situations where you know, again, I'm, I'm on the outside looking in. I got you. Yeah, but I also can tell you when people not when when people not making plays. Right. You know, and, and you know, and, and things of that sort. So I've, I've had those criticism for a few years too. And you know, in our group, my my line brothers, we text each other, and they think I hate Dabble, and I don't. Hmm. He is his style of football and coaching is not necessarily my style. You know, the Nick Sabins, I'm more the Nick Sabins, the Urban Myers. Uh, you know, though, that's more my style. But when he won those two national championships, I had to back off respect because. Even though it's not the way that I would do it, if, as long as you win, that's all I'm going to think. So I had to give that man respect for that. But you can look and see the talent that we have, exactly the questions you said. I saw the slide for the past two, three years. Like, you see the speed is not there. When they go into coverage, they can't do it. 
And, you know, I make these comments and, you know, my LBs didn't want to give credit for past performance. And I'm like, well, listen, I can see the slide that is coming because of just what you just said, the, the, the talent level. And if DJ would have performed a little bit better than what he did, we would have been in the same boat that we were. We wouldn't have been exposed. We could have potentially won the Georgia game, which we in won the ACC if, if he was a smidge. a smidge better than what he was. And then we would have been back to the playoffs and got exposed. Okay, but what... What you're hitting on right there is coaching, sir. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So you have to make adjustments to what you have. Yes. DJ is not an RPO quarterback. Yes. Okay. DJ is a straight drop back. I'm gonna put the ball in in the, on the outside. I'm gonna put the ball right in the middle. But if I have to do any touch passing, yeah. we done. He's not a touch passer. Great. He went after the Georgia game. And y'all went out there and practiced five hours after the game. You just played a football game. You know, my my uncle used to tell me, you know, when everybody out there sitting up there boxing and stuff like that, anybody can beat the air up. Okay? <laughs> the air ain't never going to fight back on you. You can go out there and make every touch pad. Yeah. You just played a football game where you couldn't make any of them. And, 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 uh, and was very um, uh, quick to put it on social media. Yeah, I'm out here working hard. I'm working hard. Yeah, but we just lost the football game, and we saw you, you can't make football. And, and again, yeah. DJ, uh, our, our offensive line. You know, we had some problems with the offensive line, but he had some clear passes. He just miss, he yes. he misses a lot of passes. Yes. Okay, so you have to adjust to that. You have to go back and say the strengths of our quarterback is we can't put balls in the hole. Uh, I'm sorry, the hole is. If we're playing cover two, you got two deep safeties and you got a corner. The hole in a, in, a, in a cover two is right behind the corner in front of the safety. Okay? That's a touch pass. It's a, it's a the, the, I guess the route that you use on that is a post corner mm -hmm. or you a, a deep corner route. Okay? okay. You got to be able to put the ball right behind the corner in front of the safety. And it's, it's, it's touch. Yeah. It's kind of touch and it's also strength. But again, you can't. Force that ball in there because the corner is just going to uh, fall back, make an interception, or you can't put it up too high. The safety is going to have enough time to get so over there. It's going to overthrow it. It's going to overthrow it. Exactly. So you as a coach, you have to adjust to what your that player is doing. Mm -hmm. We never adjusted to what our court, our, the strengths of our quarterback. Mm -hmm. We kept on, just like I said, we kept on trying to do the same thing mm -hmm. as coaches and not changing you know, our our play calling, okay, DJ, that he doesn't like to run the ball. No, so defense, defense. I remember the Georgia game. Um, defense ends was just straight crashing. Yeah, because they like he, he ain't running. No, um, and they were playing man to man. So if he, you know, Deshaun, if he broke the huddle, they playing man to man. They got their backs turned. Mm -hmm. Deshaun used to eat man to man coverage. Absolutely. Up. Every All you got to do is break the first line, and then you go. He go. Yeah. yeah. We uh, you said something about um, you know, you're talking about the six year players and like, hey, is this the best we got? I want to transition into if, if you're looking at your roster and our lack of and the big talk is the transfer portal. Okay. You know um, about using it, um, and which we have been reluctant. We not, well, we did get one guy, a former quarterback. Who really didn't could play at Northwestern with a lot of players. Okay, let's touch on that. <laughs> let's touch on that. Okay, so what you're telling me is, okay, you came in as a five-star quarterback, yeah. lost your position. Yeah. Okay. Then you decided to go to another school, and we bring him back. He didn't do nothing. I mean, I I looked at his stats. Yeah. You know, wasn't groundbreaking. What? Okay. I mean. We all men here. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, say your your girlfriend, you know, leaves you and goes over to talk to another guy. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work out. And she comes back to you and say, babe, you know, let's get back together. Mm -hmm. And then you throw a party for her, you know, to come back. Give her a scholarship, you know. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. We, yeah. you know, um, either one or two things is happening right here. Mm -hmm. Either they feel so great about this kid that, you know, we need what. Well, First of all, we got a five-star quarterback right now that we don't know what we're going to do with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then we got another five-star five, five star coming in, um, Kay Klubnik, yeah. that um, we're going to have something going on here. So why would you give another scholarship to a, a, a quarterback to bring him back? If you're going to enter into this portal, we are dead on the offensive line. Okay. 
uh, dead. Uh, you know, we got some good people coming back on the defensive line. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, what we lack is depth. That's what we lack the last two years is depth. And you get depth either through um, recruiting mm -hmm. or development. Okay. We talked about development before. We're not developing people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Defensive line, backs, anything like that. We don't have, uh, I, I hadn't seen us too deep since, um, uh, since we had that great line, we won the, the national championship. Yeah, Alabama. yeah right. exactly. Yeah. So we don't have depth anymore, but we're supposed to have the depth with all these top ten recruiting classes that we have. So either what we're doing is either these classes are not Producing. as great as we think they are, mm -hmm. or we're not developing them. Okay, so that's why I'm trying to say I'm not being you know critical um, personally. Yeah. I'm just talking about our depth, mm -hmm. lack of depth. If we're bringing in these five stars, these four stars, if we're bringing in these great athletes and everything, and we have nothing to show for it now, where are they? Mm. Okay? We've lost a couple of them through mostly, Transfer. you know. They, they went in the portal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we lost a defensive back and went into the portal and, and won a national championship. Um, you know, he didn't play very – I mean, as a defensive back, you need – Four people playing in the same place, okay? Everybody sees that guy getting beat deep, mm -hmm. but y'all don't know what, what coverage they are or, or if that guy is just making a good play being there. Sometimes you're in a, in a cover two and you're the, you were, you was called a soft corner, yeah. and then you see the play and you just run back there because nobody's there, mm -hmm. and everybody sees you yeah. know him getting beat. Yeah. That's not always the case that that was his man or anything like that. So again, yeah, safety yeah, safety help. Yeah, and, and the thing, and give him a little pass because the the game against LSU, he was playing against the uh, two wide receivers who are first team NFL this year, Jamal Chase and, and Justin Jefferson. Yeah. So he wasn't playing those those scabs in that LSU game, even though a lot of them, you know, him or AJ Terrell at the Falcons now, but he, uh, uh, Darren Kendrick was on the other side. Um, how would you think? Um, if you grew, you know, in your time, you know, like you said, eighty nine team, you had some studs, you know. If you had name, image, and likeness, would you think, like, say, hey, you know, those guys, some of those guys get big deals. You think there would be any like jealousy or issue in the locker room when, like, say, because a part of it, my thought process, if you remember the first Georgia game, DJ had the big hat, the brim hat. I'm, I'm styling. I got this Dr. Pepper money. I got um, Bo Jangles money. Uh, I'm a Heisman Trophy winner. He was star studded, you know, and I think the pressure got to him too. I yeah, think, Heisman I, Trophy candidate. Yeah, I yeah. think. I mean, I think that's all in the back of his head. Uh, some of it uh, outside, you know, like you said, the development in him. Do you think name, image, image and likeness would have affected, you know, players of your time or you know anybody in your locker room? Would there have been jealousy, things like that? No. Um, the, the the NIL stuff right now is the the problem is that in my opinion is um well again this goes back to coaching okay mm -hmm. um all that stuff outside the field happens outside the field when we get in between those lines we have to play football that's mm -hmm. what we're here for okay um that those deals have nothing to do with you being a football player okay mm -hmm. i'm sorry have nothing to do with you playing football yeah, you can still be a football player, boy. <laughs> but playing football, okay? So back then, those dudes came to play football. If it was good stuff that came um, as a result of it, mm -hmm. fine, yeah. okay? LeVon Kirkland came to play football every day, and this dude was mean and <laughs> <laughs> whatever, you know. Them dudes came to play football, that's and that's the way I learned it. We came yeah. to play football all that stuff that was going on, you know, all this stuff in the, in the, in the, in, you know, in the crowd and all yeah. that stuff, all that stuff that happened to you the day before, yeah. Coach Ford got to us like, okay, right now, it, you know, I got you guys for the next four hours, okay? I got you guys for the next four hours. I need your head on the game. Mm -hmm. This is coaching, okay? Mm -hmm. This is coaching, okay? Uh, again, the whole team takes on the, um, takes on the overall um, um, personality. personality of the coach, of the head coach. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So when you give other teams um, uh, re recruiting advantages by, um, I, I, there's no other way to say it, running your mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Dabo, early on in this NIL thing, came out and said, 
if the day I the day I'm done the day I'm done coaching is when we start um, paying. paying players. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So I've been on the recruiting trail before. What we do um, first thing is you sitting in the you sitting in the living room of, of of someone's parents and you're trying to get them to let you have their kid for the next four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're trying to, you, you know, you're trying to get a, a relationship with these people. Um, you're trying to tell them that this is the place for your son. I'm going to take care of him. You know, I'm, you know, you kind of an extended, well, you are an extended family because we're going to take him. He's going to be part of our family for the next, you know, three to four years. Uh, so if I'm sitting in there right now, I would go to them and say, hey, um, you know, um, Miss Williams, you know, I'm going to have your son for the next, you know, four years. Um, I hear that he has an offer for Clemson. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Clemson coach has vehemently talked about how he's against this NIL. They have some NILs in place. Okay. But when you get the total mm -hmm. um, uh, support of the coach, mm -hmm. you know, those things change. Because the NIL, again, everybody's thinking about Dr. Pepper and Bojangles, but there are... Um, there are community, um, you know, places in the community around where you are that offer um, that offer these NIL contracts. In, in fact, I think the quarterback down at Miami, mm -hmm. which I think his name is King, last name's King. Yeah, yeah. This guy has uh, almost a hundred, uh, almost one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff with just local businesses around there. So it's not just the national ones. Yeah, corporation. Yeah. It's local. It's a, it, it may be a car company. That gives you ten thousand dollars, or, or may give you, you know, the um, may give you the um, opportunity to to you know lease have a car for a year. You know, that's you not driving a car. You know, full tank and everything. You know, that that's money. Um, so again, when people talk about this nil stuff, they're talking about you know the the big companies, but there are a lot of small companies around there that um, that take place. Your your head coach going out in the community getting these things for me is huge. Huge. So if I can sit here and tell you, hey, you know, I'm from I'm from Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, we are happy to get your son into an NIL agreement and can't wait to get him in. But, you know, those people down in, in, um, in Tiger Town, they, they don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. And again, on record. Yes. As Sam. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, and, and even if he comes back tomorrow and says, I, I love the NIL. Yeah. yeah. You and I go you're not gonna see that part. All yes. you're gonna see is if these the day I stop being a, a, a coach is when they start playing paying yeah. paying play. My whole thing is on social issues mm -hmm. and things of that sort, take Stay the high road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can oh, yeah. you can talk about you can talk about general stuff. But again, leave personal stuff out of that because it's going to affect you, you know, one way or the other. So that's another critical part that I have on Dabo and things like, you know, the 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 football matters T-shirt when we're everybody's talking about Black Lives Matter. So, you know, I don't care when that took place or anything. I think it was Dirty. somebody said it was before and then he had the T-shirt before and wore it after everything like that. But again, you can't be tone deaf to people's issues. Yeah. And again, that plays a, a part in recruiting. I forgot about that. I yeah, it plays a big part in recruiting. Also, if you really, if you look at recruits right now, we're not getting a whole lot of black players that are coming to Clemson. I don't know if it if, if it has anything to do uh, with that part of it, or if it has anything to do with um, with is with how our um, how our um, our fans, our um, fan base. You know, reacted to when they decided to to put the Black Lives Matter things on the back of their helmet. Those people went crazy. Did y'all you remember reading yeah. mm -hmm. how um, our fan base just yeah. you know went totally against that? And and uh, I'm, I'm I'm sorry if if I was you know um, deciding the next place for my son to play and and I saw all the you know the racial epithets and all that stuff coming from that I would. I would have a problem with sending my child there. I mean, we all went to Clemson. We know what happens there yeah, yeah. and everything like that. But, you know, when that stuff comes on a national spotlight yeah. to, to all that stuff that was going on on social media, with, with what they were saying about that, um, you know, I mean, hey, we're in Clemson. Yeah. 
We know how we know how that stuff goes on and everything like that. But again, um, I'm just real critical on uh, on. You don't see Kirby. You don't see um, Nick Saban. Nick Saban. You don't see these guys um, coming out on on a whole lot of issues for there. Now Saban just recently came out on this voting act um, um, and because okay. he's from that. he's from West Virginia and um, Manchin, the the, um, uh, the guy that's holding out on all these voting rights things right. he you know spoke out against because uh, there he's from West Virginia he has some West Virginia ties also so spoke out about that but again you have to just you have to speak to people that advise you on you know hey there's a better way to come out to say this stuff. I think we've come out on a couple of occasions and just kind of put our foot in our mouths on some mm -hmm. stuff um, that that really kill you in recruiting. Okay, so you know when we're we're talking about recruiting. Okay, so you're talking about um, getting people to play for you, and sometimes it does matter where they have offers from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in some cases, okay. So we got the big dog, K Club Nick coming in. Everybody wanted a piece of him. So, you know, we took him away from um, Auburn, Baylor, Georgia, LSU, Miami, all the big schools. Yeah. Five star, big time. Okay. So we got um, another kid, kid um, Jaden Lucas. Okay. I'm gonna stop talking about people's names because I don't want to I don't want this to impact any of these. Okay. So we took him away from Arkansas. Okay. Duke. Mm. In Florida, okay. So when we talk about comparing, you know, we're talking about the recruits we have right now. So yeah, it, it matters who else is offering you, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about recruits. We were just talking not too long ago about a a guy that got offered that his biggest offer was Buffalo. We stole somebody from Buffalo. <laughs> okay, we stole somebody from. Okay, we, here's another gentleman. Hey, you tell so he. I think we just um, did. We just signed Nolan Turner's brother. Yeah, that might be him. Okay, <laughs> which right. is his godson. His godson. Okay, <laughs> we're giving out scholarships, and we're you know we're 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 giving out scholarships that you know go to critical places. Okay, here's another recruit. We stole him away from uh, Indiana, Kentucky. Northwestern. Mm. Uh, he he had a well. No, he didn't get an offer from our state, Ohio State. But you know, went there. Um, so we talking about Indiana and Kentucky. Yeah. Okay. Are those big? Yeah. Okay. His star, his star could be four, but it just ain't a, a bright one. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Here, here's our next uh, sign, and I'm talking about sign commits now. I'm not talking about you know because uh, we, we've had discussions about. You know, uh, this guy is, we may get him. I mean, we're not talking about, you know, that, yeah. hey, you know. Um, Till they sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Halle Berry is, uh, she's uh, single now. So, you know, maybe I, can, may, I got a shot. <laughs> Come on, man. We need to talk about people we got. Okay, um, this guy, we got another recruit. Took him away from Michigan, Notre Dame, Penn State, Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. Depends on, I mean, he is a... Uh, a safety, okay, so huge. We got two good corners coming in. I heard um, another guy, another sign. We got him. We had one offer, Clemson. Mm. One offer, okay. So in me going and, and talking about these guys that we're taking, okay, this guy we took away from Appalachian State, mm. okay, uh, uh, and and um, an army, okay. So when you're, you know, when you're, you're. Your best yeah. offer. Words matter. The, the, it, it, everything. Yeah. It, it also talks to the type of um, a, a recruit that we're bringing in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If we're taking you away from App Appalachian State, you know. <laughs> Something brags about. No disrespect to yeah, yeah. Appalachian State, yeah. Yeah. Furman, any of those guys. But those are not people yeah. you, you give. Type of ball. You, yeah. These are not people that you give your first scholarship to mm -hmm. you sign okay these are people you bring in when you have extra scholarships okay or maybe even a, a preferred walk-on mm -hmm. something like that we're you know talking about you know uh, people that we're bringing in that nobody else really wants not not that nobody else really wants them the power five schools don't want we out of our recruiting class of about 16 people i think four of those guys were actually offered by Power five 
schools, you know, maybe inside of the, the top 20 right now that finish the season and stuff like that. Out of 16. Right. Okay, so um, our recruiting class, I think, was something like 17th or something like that. Okay. So you're just coming off of multiple um, uh, national championships. Okay. You shouldn't be 17th in the nation in recruiting. Okay. So what's happening is either people don't really want to play for you or there's something internally going on that um, is causing people to shy away. Okay, you losing your coordinators. It's big. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, it's, big. it's huge. But, you know, you have to bring people in on Clemson University mm -hmm. and not, you know, Brett Venables or... Um, Tony uh, Elliott. Tony Elliott, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, so that is the whole thing. That's what I'm talking about right now when I say we just, yeah. we're just not... In, in a great place right now after coming off of two national championships and everything. That was great. We yeah. all were happy about that. That's over with. Yeah. That, That's bad. That, this last season was bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The last season was bad because we had a, we, we had, the, we started out the number two team in the nation and ended up going to the cheese it Bowl. No disrespect to the cheese it Bowl. Right. Yeah. Okay? No disrespect to the cheese yeah. Bowl. Okay? But when you raise your level, the expectation raises. Yeah, it, and, the expectation and, and, raises. and that's, when, when you say no disrespect, that's what people got to understand in those contents. We, you know, Clemson, when we were in school, was at a different level. When Ken and I were in school, we were in a different level. But now when we start winning a national championship, the whole expectation changes. And what disappoints me with the whole dabble thing is that the comments that he make in the position he takes, he doesn't have to take them. Even if he disagrees, just keep your mouth shut. Just keep your mouth shut. You know, and, and yeah. no harm, no foul one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But his position on, and, and you know, I deal a lot in business. So, his yeah. position in, like the transfer program, makes absolutely no sense in the, no. In, the, in, in, in the business world at all. Because you just look at a kid in the transfer portal. It's a tool. It is a competitive advantage. If you're going on tape saying that you don't believe in this and you don't want to use it, you're basically saying you're going to let your competitors use a competitive advantage and you refuse to use that. Absolutely. And it's very simple. You, your job is to make your team better, no matter where you are. So if a kid is in the portal, it's very simple. Does this kid make our team better or does he doesn't? If he doesn't, leave him in the portal. But if he makes your team better and he's available and you don't go get him, you're doing a disservice to this football team and to the commitment of the football team. That's why I just don't understand his position where he's getting it. It seems like he's a rebel without a cause. He has some kind of uh, something that he's trying to prove, an ego thing that he's trying to yeah, prove right. Yeah. And it just doesn't play in the staying on top. So when people ask, what is the future of Clemson, unless he gets off of some of these positions and make it right PR-wise, like what we were talking about, mm -hmm. long term, I don't see us just being on top. We slide back into mediocrity. Yeah, and I mean, that's where I am with everything, Lou. Um, um, you know, everybody's happy about a 10-win season. But what does a 10-win season get you? Uh, where do we go? Uh, the cheesy bowl. Okay. Uh, the trophy. <laughs> you get the cheesy bowl trophy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a 10-win season... Was good back in our day, mm -hmm. you know. In fact, my seniors, my um, my senior class was the winning this in in the ACC at the time because mm -hmm. we went forty and eight, you know, ten and two, you know, four years in a row, you know, forty and eight. We were the highest winning mm -hmm. ACC uh, senior class, but we're still there by percentage now. But yeah. these guys now that play fourteen games, yeah. fourteen fifteen games, you know, they won more games, uh, but on a percentage basis, mm -hmm. you know, uh, much better. But, um, you know, we have to get away from old stuff like the, old, the national championships and when we won it, okay? Yeah. That, that was great. Yeah. We all celebrated. All oh, that's fine. But we just celebrated a Cheez-It Bowl <laughs> victory against <laughs> Iowa that went down to the last play. Still did. If Iowa, if Iowa's quarterback, you know, threw in and right there on the goal line, missed somebody. Yeah. You know, earlier in the game, it, several different things. But we, we go down to the last play of the game against Iowa State. Yeah. No disrespect to Iowa State. <laughs> Let's say that. But, again, we're supposed to be a top-tier team, okay? We didn't. We started out number two this year, um, lost to Georgia early, still could have recovered, mm -hmm. and then we lost games to people that we should have won by 15. Yeah. We barely beat – we beat Georgia Tech Ooh. by what? 
three points. I think it was eleven to eight was the score. And that was oh, the last. Four. That was the last. Last play, play of the one game. Yard line. One yard line. That was terrible. And yeah. Georgia Tech was not a very good. Right. Yeah. I mean, don't disrespect the Georgia Tech. You can say that, <laughs> but I'm not gonna call him Mike Trash. I'm just gonna say they are in a development stage. <laughs> That you know, we should have beaten them by way more. There's several teams that we barely beat this year that okay, we should have blown out. We could have easily lost five or six games. Yeah, absolutely. It's, what um, this is something that I look at. You think about when I look at the good programs. You know, I'm saying not, not like we're not a bad program, but you look at um, like Nick Saban and Kirby Smart, and they have all these. They have assistant coaches who were actually head coaches. Even to coordinate, you know, he peels he peels Bill O'Brien and Sarkeesian, um, and Dabo likes to build from within the wheelhouse, uh, within, and it may be someone that doesn't have, and you, as we talk about coaching, maybe not have the experience you think. He goes to a lot of former players, which is good. You bring your former players in, but he might bring a former player that really hadn't done a lot of coaching. Um, you know, even C.J. Spiller never coached. But he was a good running back in Clemson. But I just think that, you know, ex- you, what do you think about the experience of coaching as it leads to on the field and um, development of players, your, your experience of coaching? Okay, well, just like you just said, we're talking about developing. Yes, we're, talking about, we're talking about um, uh, teaching people to do something and doing something yourself. Okay, yeah, you can lead by example and telling people stuff, mm-hmm. but, you know, in this game you have to teach people you also you have to put you have to put together um a game plan uh, you have to a big a big part of practice is drills mm-hmm. things that you're going to have to do during the game or you're going to have to do on in your position to to be um I, I you know to be able to be successful mm-hmm. at that there are drills that you do that some people put together and I'm like you know, as a as a player, I'm like, why are we doing this drill? And then you get in the game, he's like, oh, we're doing this drill to backpedal, put your foot down, and drive back at the ball. Mm-hmm. It makes no sense to you as a player when you're doing it, but when that coach puts together a drill, and like like I said, Coach Oliver, we did these, we did you know these drills. It was a W drill. You backpedal here, mm-hmm. run this way, backpedal here. That drill is is one of the best drills you can do as a defensive back because again you backpedaling you driving up backpedaling back driving up those are things that you do as, as part of a game so again when you're a coach you have to put together these drills um, game plan game plan parts for your position and everything like that so again it's a big difference between me running and finding the right hole and me teaching a running back how to you know, balance things and, and vision and things of that sort where, you know, um, I can tell you, but I should I have to teach you how to do those things. Mm-hmm. And again, um, just because I was in it for two years uh, coaching, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good old boy network. You know, if I got a, a head coaching job, I call you up, Lou, you know, you played um, defensive back. Hey, Lou, all I got open right now is a linebacker's coaching position. You know, I don't have a, a defensive back, you know, position, but since you're my boy, come on in. Come on mm-hmm. in. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now you defensive back. Now I got to figure out how to coach linebackers. Okay. Mm-hmm. Luckily, you know, C.J. Spiller was a running back. Everything um, worked out and everything. Schroeder is quarterback coach, uh, offensive coordinator. Again, we got a little taste of Brandon Streeter last year at Ohio State. At Ohio State, we got a taste of it at the bowl game. We ain't, uh, as the people in the, in the street said, <laughs> we ain't seen nothing. <laughs> it's it's, I yeah. mean, we we ain't seen nothing yeah. good come out of that yet. Again, he has a full. You know, we got to give him a full, full season, season to do right. that, yeah. and you know, but. When you go and get people that have um, uh, that have coached, been as a head resume. coach, yeah. has a resume. Again, everybody didn't start that way. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't walk in and be and start out as a head coach. Mm-hmm. But it's better to bring someone in that knows all facets of the defense mm-hmm. to be able to um, put put together a game plan. See, football man is game plan. Football is film study and game plan. Everybody doesn't know how to watch film. Everybody doesn't know how to, 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 you know, 
to stop a film and say, okay, this is this is trips right, you know, when when running back, you know, what and you stop the play right there, you draw that up, and then you see what they do out of that. Okay, you see what kind of you know what kind of um, you know uh, signals they use. Okay, he did. He patted his head, and then right after that, the re the receivers ran these routes. Key. Okay, everybody don't know how to do that. Okay, it may sound very easy because I'm explaining it to you guys, but would you guys think of that that type of stuff no. if you were just watching the game? Mm -hmm. That's the type of stuff you yeah. do, and that's the experience you get from being from being a coach and and figuring things out. That's why I talk about doing game adjustments. Okay, I you know the brothers get on me all the time about <laughs> about you know Nick Saban. Nick Saban is gonna put the best man on the field yeah. to play the game. That's right. Changing your quarterback out in the middle of a national championship game, no, never done before. Yeah, he Who brought you there the whole year? Brought you there the whole year. Yeah. Absolutely made a change. Won the football game. Um, at the time, everybody's just like we were talking about in the um, in the Alabama game last week. You know, you can't stretch the field out because you know Jaden Hurts not very good on, on long passes. So you just put everything inside of a twenty yard category and you just push everything in. That's what happened to me in the in the Alabama game. They lose that deep threat where you yeah. can stretch the field. Now Georgia. You know, with those fast guys they have, you just push everything in, into a 20-yard range where you don't have to worry about that. And now, you know, you you got inexperienced um, receivers that you got to – that have to run pinpoint routes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were inexperienced and, you know, helped them um, not win, win the football game. So, um, you know, coaching, making adjustments as you go, and also development, you know. Mm -hmm. In game things that that should happen um, that we just we don't do it all the time. We mm -hmm. just we have a game plan. We're just gonna stick with it. Right. But you'll see people come out at halftime and they're doing something totally different than they were doing in the first half. I think we just get a game plan and we're just gonna stick with it no matter what. And you you can't do that mm -hmm. and win all the time. Mm -hmm. But you can do that if you got Deshaun Watson in there playing football and he's just gonna. Mm -hmm. Make plays, you know. That man just made plays. Yeah, made Trevor plays. Lawrence made plays, yeah. um, you know, despite coaching and everything like that. Despite the, uh, the game plan. Yeah. yeah, but we don't have a, we didn't have a quarterback now that, that can make plays. I mean, he actually was not making the play that he was supposed to make. I'm, you know, I'm not being critical towards him because I, I think we had some, some, um, some problems with, with the offensive line. And then, um, you know, where, you know, he – was hurried a whole lot and um and and you know couldn't be um the quarterback uh, he was and everything but you know people also talk about his development you know he kind of he came into Clemson his first year and played very well mm -hmm. then the next year we downhill mm -hmm. yeah. okay so same thing they said about Trevor Lawrence they said his footwork was totally went downhill when he got to Clemson and you know we can actually see him yeah. Matriculating downward from, his, um, from his freshman year to his. So, so explain this to me because I never played football before. How do? You, why would it decline and not just stay the same, not get any better? As like coaching, coaching. Yeah, you're you're either changing something mm -hmm. um, that I do well. Um, mm -hmm. We had a a, a quarterback coach, um, and I'm not going to name any names, but. Uh, we had a quarterback that he didn't like his throwing motion. So, again, um, he wanted to change that. Sometimes, you know, they want people to, you know, to either come over the top, be quicker, mm -hmm. or, you know, different throwing angles is what they call it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, like, you know, going back to somebody like Byron, Byron Leftwich, which had this long, wind up. yeah, long wind up. Mm -hmm. and then you got some of them like uh, Dan Marino that has a, a quick throwing motion. So, a coach comes in and tries to change that, but if you don't have a a quarterback that can um, uh, adjust to that, mm -hmm. you know you got a problem. I, I I think our problem with DJ is, and again, well, going back to your question, mm -hmm. if your quarterback coach cannot uh, adjust to your throwing motion or um, adjust to your strong points, mm -hmm. 
then you got a problem. And I, that's our problem right now. We have not adjusted to somebody that can, you know, that can just throw the ball hard outside in the middle and stuff like that. But when we got to make a touch pass, we got problems right there. So, again, in that case, on the defensive side, I just – I set up a defense where we can defense all those throws to the side and we're going to make you make that other throw. Okay? So we're going we're not going to let you throw to the outside. We're going to make you make that throw over the middle over the linebacker or we're going to make that that throw in that hole that we talked about early and everything. Um so again, you as a coach have to uh recognize uh the the strengths of your your player and and go on that. What we it looks like what we try to do is we try to change them, and um, and what's happening is the development part of it is is declining. Okay, so and again as a as a as a quarterback, it's footwork. It's you know having your feet underneath you, stepping the right way, um, you know, everything. I you know I played quarterback for a little while in high school, so I don't remember a whole lot of that. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot of footwork, and it's a lot of um, you know just pointing the right way and, and, and um, throwing motion, release angles, and, and, and things of that sort. So, again, when you have um, documented people talking about, you know, uh, you know Trevor Lawrence's decline, um, where, where DJ is right now, um, God, we it was a lot of time where, he, you know, he wouldn't even play Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson came in, mm-hmm. if you guys remember, as a freshman against Georgia, Came in and threw an NFL pass as a quarterback, first play, and then went to the back of the bench for the rest of the game. Because <laughs> yeah. he's Lord and Cole Stout. Yeah, Lord and Cole Stout. <laughs> again, we're talking about personnel issues yes, and everything. Yes, Later on that season, really, if Dabo doesn't win that USC game, it's curtains for him. So he brings in um, Deshaun Watson on a torn ACL, wins the football game. Terrible. Goes into the you know the bowl game and then puts Stout in. Everybody's happy again. You know I think Stout gets hurt and that's when we start to see. That's when Deshaun starts playing football. Yeah. You know that's when we get to see him play football. So that's what I'm talking about about putting the right people in the game. The personnel. You you as a head coach. You know you look at film more than anybody. You go up to your position coach and says, hey. We don't have the right person in here. No. Okay? Or you're the one that's putting the wrong person in the game. Mm-hmm. Okay? So personnel, development, and making changes during the game is the the the, the problem I have with, 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 with Dabo. Got Love him to death as a person. I've met him on several occasions. You know, we have our little uh, alumni football games and stuff. Met him. You know, a great person. Like I said, what he's done to bring these, um, you know, these former players back. And coach, yeah. absolutely great. He's got a guy, um, um, Woody McCorvey, there now. And uh, Woody uh, was there when I was there as as a, um, a quarterbacks coach. He's a, I think he's a, an offensive advisor now, um, and um, coached at uh, Alabama, several different places, and everything like that. So mm-hmm. brought Coach McCorvey back, and um, Coach McCorvey within the last couple of years uh, went into the uh, the Alabama Hall of Fame um, um, for for coaching. Mm-hmm. So. So, um, good brother um, was a like I said was a quarterbacks coach when I was there. So Dabo brought him back as an as an advisor, and he's doing a great job. You know, um, I, maybe with the diversity issues and everything like that. Um, you know, which um, uh, I think we're having some di- diversity issues. Um, you know, within the um, within the, uh, the the football department and everything like that, and we got you know issues with with, with this um, with, with how we've uh, talked about the NIL uh, in the past. Uh, those are recruiting points. Those are things that um, I mean b- between you and I. I mean, you know, we talk about Deion Sanders um, bringing this guy in, um, um, you know, moving him um, from a. Uh, uh, from a um, uh, a Division One school um, over to an HBCU, um, from what I understand that guy's already signed a one point five million dollar NIL deal. Yeah. Okay, so you know money talks and that other stuff walks. <laughs> yeah. So again, you know, mm-hmm. I HBCU. You know, we we went to an, a a PWI. Mm-hmm. Uh, we visited a lot of HBCUs and everything. Um, 
I think for this thing to work and, and for this thing to uh, uh, be as monumental as I think Travis Hunter's got to, I think he's got to stay there three years. If he leaves next year and goes into the portal, that kind of great. He was the first person to do that, the number one athlete and everything. He's got to stay there. He's got to graduate, and he's got to um, get drafted. Okay, because I've said on several occasions. Um, I don't think that a, a, a football athlete is going to go to, going to leave all the resources that they have at a, a Clemson or a, a Power 5 school and go to an HBCU because the resources are just not there. You don't have the same dietitians available. You don't have the same medical staff. You don't have the same uh, weight room, uh, dietary and things that sort of, I went, you know, I, I used to visit a, a buddy of mine that played at Savannah State when I was there. Um, you know, everything at that point, you know, was the, the resources are not even close. So, again, you have to stay at a, um, uh, in, in football for three years before you can go to the league, okay? Um, being in a place where the resources are not as great um, for three years is totally different than with the basketball guys. You can do it for one year. You can be uncomfortable for a year and do that. So again, I love what they did in that. I can't say that I would have done that for my son outside of the NIL. Now, you know, the NIL, you know, we got a million and a half coming to him or, you know, if, if Dion's doing something with the, um, you know, with uh, the resources. That's the biggest thing between the HBCUs and the PWI. It's the resources. I mean, everybody knows that. It's resources. It's exposure. You know, mm -hmm. you want your kids to, to, to get in the, in the position to play um, in the NFL. Again, there's, you know, people say, hey, if you can ball, people going to see you. It's harder to see you if people are not looking at you all the time. Um, but easier to see you now with all the social media and everything like that. But just talking about when I came up and everything, it, you didn't have all that. You just got on TV and, um, you know, someone would see you um, maybe playing against another team and you stand out. And, and, you know, you would be noticed that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's just resources. I mean, I, I hats off to the, the HBCUs and, you know, the atmosphere. You know, we all used to go to South Carolina State, the AU Center, and, and enjoy ourselves. And then we come back, you know, to our kind of cushy <laughs> places and stuff like that. And they've got some, you know, some great places yeah. too. But, uh, again, you know, it's just resources. Yeah. And resources... Uh, you know, win the fight in, in most cases. But now money is involved and, um, you know, it, it's it's evening the playing field. So I'm, I'm hoping a lot more Travis Hunters come out and um, and go to HBCUs and everything. But, you know, he's still not going to get the same exposure as he would would have at Florida State, um, uh, you know, and resources. Um, in final, like wrapping this up, we've gone through what's wrong. Let's. Let's end it on some optimism. Optimism? Um, <laughs> I'm going to say I hope I am wrong about what's going on in Clemson football. Um, I hope that we're able to develop the, the people we have there, do much better with where we are with, with recruiting right now because we got 16 players and, mm -hmm. you know, we just don't – we didn't get – we didn't replace what left and, uh, you know – I don't think we have any depth, mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm, I hope I'm wrong. I hope yeah. that, you know, uh, we can come out of this and win the ACC, uh, get back into the um, to dance. I just don't think we can do it because I don't think we have the depth. I think uh, we don't have the development. And I think now, since we don't have the athletes that we had before, now we got a coach. And... Hadn't seen a whole lot of it. Hadn't seen a whole lot of when we get into a coaching match yeah. that we just, you know, fly out and, and, and win the, the coaching match. Well, we are, right. well, Mitch, man, we appreciate you being here. Right. We're going to, uh, hey, once we start doing some you, some some Zoom stuff, we're going to have to do some post-game recap. Absolutely. Recaps, Can't wait. Recaps. Can't the Jack wait. The Jack Can't podcast wait. As a consultant and uh, for us. I truly appreciate you, bro. Right. Can't wait. Well, I want to thank you for... Um, uh, following us at Jack Moo Podcast and also thank you for viewing our episode. We appreciate our uh, frat brother here, Mitch Belton, former Clemson player. We truly appreciate him joining us on the show today.
Thanks, guys, and I appreciate you guys inviting me. Thanks. All right. Please subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, IG, or YouTube. You can also listen to our podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, www.theempireradio.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts.